What's going on, y'all? What's going on, y'all? All right, so this is Biblical DNA. Today, we're going to be discussing um, the geneticist Eron. Eron El Hayek. I also have Razib Khan that I'm gonna bring up. Um, he just recently did a like an interview with Brother Garfield, so I'm I'm gonna be doing a video, or I'm, this video is gonna be consistent of him also because we're gonna get some clarification um, that wasn't obviously wasn't um done with the video of brother garfield because these hebrew twistalites um they tried to take his words and twist them you know what i'm saying so we're gonna go ahead and clarify some things but th i find this iran um el hayek um more interesting because a lot of these black hebrew israelites or twistalites they like to use his work and try to say oh well see Look, he's a geneticist from Israel, and he just tried to prove that we was kings. We was the Israelites. But, you know, see, the thing is about that, he, this Dr. Eron Elhak, El Elhak, got destroyed in his own comment section, which I'm going to scroll down to the bottom, and I'm going to really focus on this comment that this user posted more than I'm going to be focusing on um, this Eron. But it's in the in his article in the ancient origins, um, resurrecting the ancient Israelites from the Valley of Dry Bones. All right, you can read if you want to. Um, to me, this is um, persuado science. The only thing I really want you to focus on is um, the chronology, showing that this so-called doctor knows chronology. He understands that the um, chronology is important when it comes to the Bible because there's only there's timelines. That you have to stick to in order to you know show that the bible is is true like the events in the bible actually occurred so you can sit you can see right here he clearly used on uh, chronology showing the timeline of ezekiel's prof, um, prophecies were written in the sixth century after several um exiles of the judeans to babylon 601 to 582 bc so he clearly shows that he has um the intelligence, you know, to use chronology, he understands the importance of timelines. So the scroll, scroll down to the main point that black Hebrew Israelites or twistalites like to use. Um, it's around here when it starts talking about the Turkic Abraham. This using the um, DNA and see he used the primeval DNA test um, to the ancient Israelites and the thing is okay which ancient Israelites did he use? You know what I'm saying we're gonna see. Mm, the ancient Israelites were obtained from three um, regions: Matza Tachet at the territory of the tribe of Benjamin, Pekin. Nat, Nata, um, Natali and Raphet cave um, Manessa near the valley of Rakefet River. All right, scroll down. See, this is where the part he starts talking about um, the whole Israelites and the custom, the, the concept of they were related to um, Neolithic people. All right, so. It talks about a young woman, a young Neolithic woman, only 6,200 years old, and other people may find that they are close to Abraham, a Turkish man, E1B1, who led a group of Anatolians to what he must to have felt was the promised land, to what he must to have felt. Well, I don't know, to what he must have felt, I think he he didn't mean to add that too right there, have felt like was the promised land, have felt was the promised land, okay, has felt was the promised land, 
All right, so I don't know what he's talking about. A Turkish man, E1B1, um, with Anatolians. This sounds like um, Persuado science. This sounds like made up um, hearsay, unless he has DNA proof um, that Abraham was E1B1. What he's saying is complete nonsense. This is this is no. There's no evidence behind that. Um, nowhere in Israel have they admitted that Abraham's Y chromosome is E1B1. So this is this is made up. This is uh, Persuado science. Um, all right. And he goes on about the maternal DNAs due to many population replacements that the area experienced. We can see a diverse range of mitochondrial hobble groups that vary over time. Among the most common lineages are J2, K1A, and T. An analyst of Judeans from the first century AD confirmed that prevalence of the T hobble group found today in less than 10% of Ashkenazic Jews. Unsurprisingly, not a single skeleton matches the alleged four Ashkenazic Jewish mothers whose origins origin in the prehistoric historic Europe, as expected, an exact match with um, one of those mothers was found in Neolithic Spain. So the one he's talking about finding in Neolithic Spain was K1A, but if you are a follower of my channel, I've showed that Hobble Group K1A was actually found in Israel also. Um, so I don't know why he came up with that concept and, um, you know, why it's not like K1A wasn't present. K1A was present in Israel. So he this this guy is just is, something happened where he probably did a DNA test and it found out he's not part of like the whole um, how about group J1, page 58, and his maternal DNA was probably something else, um, like R or U or something like that, or something, a hobble, a maternal hobble group probably that wasn't Jewish, considered Jewish, like N1B or K1A or H. So we see that K1A was actually present in um, the late Bronze Age and Iron Age in Israel. Whether they were Israelite women um, is redundant. We can see K1A was present. So it's been present in Israel for quite some time. So the E1B1 um, Anatolian um, DNA. So what I got from that is he's talking about Natufians. So the Natufians weren't Israelites. They had nothing to do with Israelites. And let me zoom in. I apologize if... I'm still getting used to this um, live streaming and whatnot, so it's it's all new to me and showing my screen like this. So the, the Natufians have nothing to do with Israel. Let's be completely up, up forward. Um, we understand that the Bible has a, a, a chronology, a timeline, and 12,700 years ago is not part of the Bible. Um, that's just point blank. So we clearly see that this man is dealing with Pesuedo science, and he's dealing with this concept that somehow the Israelites were, were 12,000 you know, years old, and that's just not the case. We know that the Israelites are late Bronze Age, Iron Age people. You see what I'm saying? So I don't know what this um this Dr. Elhak is talking about. Um, he needs to check himself because he's mixing up some Neolithic people with the late Bronze Age and Iron Age. All right. Now, go back to. So this is the whole point he's making. So this is the only match from pre prehistoric times to date, but it is reasonable to expect many more to come as ancient DNA from Eastern Europe and the Caucasus will be sequenced. Interestingly, the Y chromosomal chromosomal Holotypes of the ancient Israelites are typically E1B1 and T1 holotypes. This is a lie. These weren't ancient Israelites. These were like Natupian people or uh, Calcolithic people. So, and it's not just E1B1. It's the the um, subclade of EM123 goes down to EM34, which goes down to EM84. And I'll show you back that on the hobble tree. Um, 
commonly found today in Africa with lower frequencies in the Middle East and Europe. So, um, I don't know what he's talking about as far as these hobotypes he bring, he's bringing up saying that somehow they're ancient Israelites. We see that they're not ancient Israelites. Um, but this is what he's talking about. So he's talking about the people pre um late bronze ray um late bronze age Israelites. He's not talking about um Israelites. He's talking about Kelcolithic. He's talking about people before Shem and Ham and Japheth and all that biblical stuff. And he's talking about all of that before those people ever came. Because re remember, um, the biblical Adam isn't that old. He's only um, supposedly around um, 6,000 years old. You see what I'm saying? We see that in this map that he's only around 6,000 um, years old. This is actually, we can run this through the BC um, calculator that I showed y'all. So let's start with the oldest, 3,954. All right, go to your handy dandy BC um, converter calculator. Execute. So we get 5,975 years. So Adam would have been born 5,975 years. So Give or take all the years it would have took um, for, you know, the biblical timeline to come to pass. Noah wasn't, bo um, wasn't born around the time of Adam. He was born around 2,898 B.C. So what this Dr. Um, L. Hayek came up with is just complete nonsense. So I'm not sure exactly where why he came up with... Um, the concepts that he came up with, but he's he just shouldn't came up with it. You know, it's just I can understand if he just messed up and you know he 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 was speaking without understanding biblical chronology. But the fact is, he's a so-called professional. He's a so-called scholar. He's a um a professor at a university, and he still has this um persuado science mythology um up. He hasn't taken it down, so he still has it up. So he still, I don't know if he still believes in this. I'm guessing so, since he hasn't deleted it. You know, if I believed in something, I would keep it up. Um, and that just seems to be the case with this individual. All right. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to wait until I can read the comments. His, this website just crashed on me, as, as y'all can all see. And if you have, if you try to come on here and get the same thing, you have to wait until it actually shows um, comments. Not this, because it's not going to open showing this. So let me try to refresh it again. Man. Come on now. There we go. All right, go ahead and click it. All right, so this is the comment right here where um this Dr. Eron El Hayek um basically he gets on. Um, I'm gonna just be straight up with y'all, like, you know, he basically and I and I asked this individual on, on Facebook if he'd be interested in doing a broadcast with me, um, because I think I think it would be really uh, educational for me, you know, to have a chance to speak to this individual because he's he seems highly educated, seems like he knows what he's talking about, you know, he's in the right direction when it comes to genetics and understanding um timelines. Um, he understands biblical chronology, and that's exactly what I want. You know, it's basically for me to, you know, gather any information I might not have with somebody that seems to be educated. So this is his name, Jacoby Oded, um, dear Dr. Iran El, um, El Hayek. There are a few problems with um, your study, business project, and with this 
article? Well, obviously, the first and most important problem is that those DNA samples that you used and used for so-called ancient Israelites are not really samples of ancient Israelites at all. Your samples, Gal, Essek, Sarah, Terah, Nahar, Deborah, Abraham, Ashkenaz, Mashak, Hagar, Agam, Ketara, Bara, Adam, An Hanak, Eber, Haran, Ruth are all periods of between 4,200 BCE and 11,500 BCE, which is between 3,000 B years and 10,000 late Bronze Age and around 1,200 BCE, according to the Menepta Stili. So, right there, that paragraph alone, he basically he destroyed anything that this doctor Aaron El Hayek came up with. So, I mean, it's like I said, this individual, he's taking his time to actually gather um, great information. I, I mean, I, I've done, I've pretty much done the same. Um, but this individual, he's actually taking the time um, to write a carefully educated um, comment. <laughs> comment. To detail exactly, you know what um what he's found, um, what he's found in um through his research. So, I mean, this Doctor Eron El Hayek should have done the same thing. That's that's the that's the bottom line. It's really hard to come up with the, an explanation why this so-called doctor didn't do a carefully and thoughtful. Um, educational um, research as he should have, but you know, I can't speak for him. I have emailed this so-called doctor, but he's failed to respond to my email, and I, I emailed him being professionally. Um, I actually used my um, student um, email address also, so he could have definitely emailed me, but he hasn't, so that's all right, though. Um, continue reading on now, some people might be fooled to think that this time gap is not important because there were no changes in the DNA landscape of ancient Canaan between those periods. However, I think we both know that this is not true. I think we both know that during the early, middle, and late Bronze Age between 3200 to 1200 BCE, there were vast waves of migrations from the north, mainly from the areas of Iran and Turkey, but also from the Caucasus in Southeast Europe to the Levant. And we both know that those vast waves of migrations completely changed the DNA landscape in ancient Canaan by the time the first Israelites appeared. Not to mention that according to the biblical record, um, which might be at least partially true. At least some of the an ancestors of the Israelites, Abraham, Sarah, Rebecca, Leah, and Rachel, actually migrated to Can Canaan themselves from the era, area of Haran, which is in South Turkey. See, and I would love um, to have this individual on um, like a live broadcast so I can interview him because, I mean, I'm trying to figure out if he actually believed, believes these people in the Bible is like true, like word for word, like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, you know, Sarah, Rebecca, Leah, and Rachel. It's, I mean, it'd be quite interesting to see, you know what I'm saying? I, can, I can't see these people not being true according to the Bible because it's like, you know, how do they have these perfectly like lineages like written down and it's all fake? You know what I'm saying? Like, is things might be like, a little bit messed up, sure. Not everybody's perfect in timekeeping, you know, of like genealogy and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? You're you're gonna start slipping um somewhere down the line, but you know, could these been right, like where they descend from a forefather? You know, that's that's an interesting point. Like I would like to have a conversation with him about. All right. In fact, the original study on the sample from the Pekin. Cave in Israel from which you took 
some of your so-called ancient ancient Israelite samples, those from 4,200 BCE, um, especially, what is that? Specifically mentions some of those later Bronze Age migrations and describes the changes they made to the DNA landscape of ancient Levant, saying, Previous genome-wide ancient DNA studies from the Near East have revealed that at the time when agriculture developed, populations from Anatolia, Iran, and the Levant were approximately as genetically differentiated from each other as present-day Europeans and East Asians are today. By the Bronze Age, however, expansions of different Near Eastern agriculturalists Populations Anatolian, Iranian, Le and Le Levantine in all directions and admixtures with each other substantially homogenized populations across the region, thereby contributing to the relatively low genetic differentiation that prevails today. Uh, showed that the Levant, Levant Bronze Age population from the site of An Gaza, Jordan, 2490 to 2300 BC, could be fit statistically as a mixture of around 56% ancestry from a group related to 11 pre pottery Neolithic agriculturalists, represented by ancient DNA from Mazza. Israel and An Gaza, Jordan, 8,300 to 6,700 BCE, and 44% related to populations of the Iranian Calcolithic um, Iran, 4,680 to 3,662 BCE. Aber suggested that the Canaanite Levant Bronze Age population from the site of Sidon, or Sidon, Lebanon, 1700 BCE, could be modeled as a mi mixture of the same two groups, albeit in different proportions. 48% Levant uh, Neolithic related and 52% Iran Calcolithic related. However, in the Neolithic and the Bronze Age sites analyzed so far in the Levant are separated in time by more than 3,000 years old, making the studies of samples that fill in this gap such as those from the Pekin of critical importance. All right, let me see. I'm not gonna read all of these. Um, my throat, like I've been dealing with allergies, so if you would like to, you can read them. Um, there's not going to. I'm gonna bring up this article that I keep having to bring up. Um, it's dealing with like which hobbling groups came into the Levant during the Bronze Age, and what we see is it's going to be your Hobble Group J. So this finding contrasts with both earlier Neolithic and Epipolithic Levantine populations, which were dominated by Hobble Group E and later Bronze Age individuals, all of whom belong to Hobble Group J. So what this tells me is that those people, regardless if they were calling themselves um, Hamites or, you know, uh, Semites or whatever, you know, they all belong to a uh, Hobble group J. Um, we see that the, the Phoenicians carried Hobble group J2 and that the um, the Israelites carried a Hobble group J1-P58. So a subclade of that. Um, I mean, that's what the Bible tells us, that these people were related. So I don't see them being farly, um, far separated in DNA. I really don't. Um, and I think this in individual believes the same thing. And it's just too bad that he wouldn't. Um, he did. He hasn't. I wouldn't say he wouldn't. I'll say he hasn't um, responded to my Facebook message. Because I'd be very interested in doing an interview with him. Because, I mean, for me, like, this is a lot that he typed out. You know, this is good stuff. So it just shows me that he's educated. Um, but it's just a great comment. And the sources that he used are just like, wow. He literally hit this so-called doctor with the ban because he he filled him with so much information that he had no, like he's not, he wasn't going to respond because 
he knows that he was corrected in his own research, like his own own persuado research, because he didn't deal with facts. He didn't deal with the actual DNA that was found in Israel. He just came with this complete nonsense um, of calculitic and neolithic period of DNA instead of dealing with the Bronze Age and the Iron Age. So it's specifically Israelite um, period would be late Bronze Age and Iron Age. So, like I said, um, let's see. like I said, this individual, I wish he um, would hit me up. I would love to do an interview with him. And if you find this um, video, please, by all means, um, hit me up, man. You can comment. Or you can find my email and about me, my about me, so or about on my channel. So please hit me up. Um, so the next individual um, I'm going to be talking about is Razib Khan. He did the interview with um, Brother Garfield, um, and this is really important to discuss this Razib Khan because he deals with genetics. Um, I looked him up, did a little bit of, you know, research on, um, on Wikipedia and it says that, you know, he dealt with the, the genetics of the Jews and whatnot. Let's go ahead and let me show you this real quick. So he brought up a Muslim. Hmm. Interesting. So he deal with the Jewish migrations. So I have this one up already. Israeli researcher challenges Jewish DNA links to Israel, calls those who disagree Nazi sympathizers. All right. Bring up Khan. So the one he's talking about, he's talking about this Dr. L. Al Hayek. And like again, I don't know what this guy's problem is. Like he seems like to be upset about his DNA results. Like to me, it's like get over it. Like I, my Hobbit group, I've told y'all before, is EV thirteen. You know what I'm saying? My maternal DNA is J one B one eight. Like get over it. Like who cares? You know what I'm saying? Like I understand that my Hobbit group isn't so called Semitic or Hermetic or none of that stuff. Like you know what I'm saying? Like get over it. Um. Like, my Hobbit group was amongst the ancient Greeks and whatnot. Like, which so-called Hamites or Semites or, you know what I'm saying? Like, what was people were amongst them? So, am I a Japhite? Like, no. Nobody's calling EV-13 Japhites. They just not. All right. So, I got his, his part of this article up. Discovers Razib Khan did a textured... Critique in his gene expression blog, noting the study's historical fuzziness and its selective use of data to come up with what seems like a pre cooked conclusion. As Razib writes, it's hardly surprising that we would find a small but sizable Khazarian contribution to the Jewish gene pool. In fact, the male line of my own family traces to the Caucasus. Suggesting I'm one of the temper or twenty percent or so of Jews who line whose lineage traces to converted world Khazarians. So what I'm guessing, I don't know if his his Hobble group is R one A, um, but what's what's interesting about that is this Razib Khan, his his Hobble group is actually R one A too. So that's I find that interesting that he would also have the same Hobble group as Razib Khan. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know if that, I mean, that's the case, obviously, because he's only 20% Caucasus, so he's just guessing it's coming from the Khazarians. But, you know, I never know. All right, let's go ahead and get to this. Uh, yeah, so that's one, one. Because the Natempians are like 12,000 years old. I don't know. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. so the Natempians are E1B1. All right, which means that um, it might be a descendant of that. So E one B one, Natufian, E one A is PPN, 
Yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not like sure if I can give a clear answer because I think the age, the age is going to be, um, is too deep to ask that. In terms of like some of these, some of these haplogroups um, built up their mutations more recently than 12,000 years ago. Right. So he said um, more like these haplogroups built up their um, mutations, you know, more years than um, what people, I guess, try to like show that they have. But I want to show y'all something um, from this article that pretty much puts EM2, which is E1B1A, um, in Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa. So EM2 is the most common hobble group in Sub-Saharan Africa, with the frequency peaks in Western about 80%, in Central Africa about 60%. The same hobble group is also present in North Africa, although at a lower frequency, usually below 10%. And this that 10% comes from um the the Arabs with the Arab slave trade and how these um sub-Saharans were brought up through Mali to North Africa enslaved. They also went to Spain. Um and obviously they were already converted to Islam, but these are the people you would call Blackamoors. They were called Blackamoors. So you have the Moors of North Africa, um, called the um, Emaza, Emaza, or Berbers, um, Emazan. um, and then you have people of you know Sub-Saharan Africa, which were forced obviously to become Arabized or Arabized and converted to Islam. And these are the people that were commonly referred to as Blackamoors. So, using the principle of the phylogenographic parsimony, the resolution of the E1B1B trepidation in favor of a common ancestor of EN2 and EN329 strongly supports the hypothesis that Hobbit group E1B1 originated in Eastern Africa, as previously suggested, in that chromosomes E and 2 so frequently observed in Sub-Saharan Africa trace their descent to a common ancestor present in Eastern Africa. So E and 2 um, started in Eastern Africa, and it goes into the whole concept of the Bantu expansion, um, and they basically started expanding from East Africa to um, West Africa, you know, Central Africa, obviously, because it's closer to East, to East Africa and South Africa. So it started doing different um, migrations. All right. So I don't know why um, this Razid Khan, you know, couldn't just bring something like this up. But luckily, y'all got me to do this for y'all now because I'm not afraid. And the hobble groups, to clarify, the hobble groups that were found amongst the Natufians, let's not, um, let's not try to sit there and say they were E1B1As or they were E-M2 uh, or EM2. They weren't. They were belonging to the EM35s, which produced the, the EM34s, you know, the, the EM84s. And so these people... Um, as you can clearly see, they stood in the land. Um, the whole argument that I've been having um, to deal with are the two, um, the two Hurrians that were found by the the royal, um, royal caste or whatever. They were considered royal, royal caste of Hurrians. With they had non-Semitic names, but they also had the the EM thirty four markers. So a subplate of that. So, I mean, we obviously can see that these people have been in the land for a long time. I don't think they fit this biblical narrative of Abraham coming from the Caucasus and coming down to Israel or coming over to Israel from the Chaldees, which was, that's what it says in the Bible. So, um, the whole point with that too is that, you know, all these individuals have, has Caucasian DNA. So, I mean, you can take that any which way possible. Like, did they mix? Did there, were they women? Like, were their mothers Caucasian? You know, did they mix 
sometime because of the mixing of people, like bringing people from different cultures coming in and, you know, slowly starting intermingling and showing the Tufian and Caucasian DNA. I don't know, but these two EM34s, um, which I'll just bring up because for those that haven't watched my video, probably might not know what I'm talking about. So let me bring it up real quick. Like so. Let's see, Excel. Mm. Let's see if it's not. Nah. So let's see. It's for some reason, not letting me bring it up. I don't know why. That's weird. Yeah, for some reason, not letting me bring it up. Mm, so I'm just gonna. I guess I'm gonna try one more time if it's gonna let me bring it up. If not, I'll just um Yeah, it is what it is. And for some reason it's not letting me bring it up. But if you haven't seen what I'm talking about, just watch some of my previous video my uh, my previous video, it's in there. So just watch my previous video. Um when I'm like debunking the black Hebrew Israelites. Um you can just see it in those ones um but yeah the, these neolithic people have nothing to do and these calculithic people have nothing to do with israel now this em34 which it is the descendant of em34 i understand it's a subclade of em34 i just say em34 so people can understand that it belongs to em34 which is e1b1b 1b2 or something like that so just have an understanding of um, what he's talking about. Does that answer the question? Right, right. Well, that's what I was kind of getting at. Yeah, because those specimens, I believe it's like five of them. Um, there was a E1, B1, and then two of them was E1, B1, B. And as a matter of fact, this is uh, my, my... Another thing is to remember um, when they don't have a full um, genome... If there's no collagen found in the bone, they can't get a full genome. So it's based off a of percentage. And maybe they can find out the hobble group that it belongs to, but they can't find, this, find the subclade because there's not enough collagen um, to test the genome for. So what they got is uh, E1B1, which is more than likely EM215, which is the forefather of EM35. And EM35 is the forefather of these these EM34s, um, or E1B1B1B, and these are the down subclades of that. But okay, my, my cousin, my friend, he studies genetics. His name is uh, Amir. I'm gonna go he, uh, over right to forty. He talks about the um, the two things too thousand years people in places like israel and lebanon look pretty different like natufians like like half natufian maybe um and then something happened before prehistory but after say like you know six thousand eight thousand bc where people from the east came in and mixed with the indigenous people and they also moved the other way too and you so did you hear what he what he just said he said that these people that came from the east they came to the west and they started intermingling with each other so, I mean, that's, you know what I'm saying, that's, that's one way to think of it because um, if, if you have people that were already there in the land um, and these people that weren't already there in the land came over um, and they slowly started inter intermingling and dealing with each other, um, so these people that came over, they would obviously um, 
you know, be the ones showing that, you know, mixing their gene, genome. And that's the reason why we have Hoffman Group J1, page 58, and J2. Um, and we know that they were involved with the Amorites, um, the Sidonians, the Hittites, the Canaanites, the Israelites, the Kohenim, the Hashemites, or your so-called descendants of Ishmael, the Kares tribe or clan, um, the, the House of Saud. So we understand that, you know, these people would have had Caucasian DNA. And so you get this like mixture of like West Asian people and the haplogroups are E, J, usually maybe a few L's here and there. I don't know. Um, and so this is the original stock that you see in these bronze age cities of the Phoenicia. And also they found things from Ashkelon, I think, in Israel. Um, and so this is the original stock of much of the Western Middle East uh, of the Levant. And it's been overlaid in some ways by later migrations. Um, but, um, and I think the Caucasus is mentioned there. So later migration, there's the Europeans that came, there are Turks that came, et cetera, et cetera, right? Uh, later during the Islamic period, lots of African slaves came in the south of Turkey. You heard what he just said, African slaves came. And the, the problem with that is like African slaves came with, through different um, migrations into the Middle East, you know? From what I understand, one of the first ones, the first people um, that I've seen bring um, black people or a Negro type of people to the Middle East are from the artifacts of the Assyrians. And they depict them themselves with these, um, you know, these wide nosed, thick lit, um, coarse, uh, coarse hair people. Um, and, you know, they're basically treating them like crap. And you can clearly see the difference between these Assyrians, which are Semites, compared to these, you know, people that are supposedly depicted as, you know, Nubians. And they're just treating these people, you know, like crap. So um, I think the, the moral of this is that, you know, we have different um, migrations of slavery that black people were brought to the Middle East. Um, I don't think it's just one. You know, we have that one. We have the, the Romans. Uh, we we have um the Arabs and we probably had you might have the transatlantic um slave trade that could have possibly brought um black people around into the around Mediterranean but don't you know don't get it twisted black people have already been you know going through slavery way before that. There's a fair amount of that ancestry too, but the original founding stock, um, you know, most of the ancestry does date to the Bronze Age. You know, the empires of you know, the Jews, you know, Egyptians, right. Hittites, all these, that's, that was, that was the period when it all came together. If you go back to the end of the Ice Age, it was all much more chunky. Um, what happened is it was like a great gene flow mixture, probably imperial, pre-literate imperial um, Syria. They tend to be much more like the foundational Middle Eastern populations. Uh, so would it be safe to say for the audience that the Hebrews or the people that we know as Yahuda Jews are a middle uh, are a Bronze Age people, and they're not solely Natufians. Because some people like to yeah. equate the. Uh, oh right. yes, you're exactly correct. The Natu- hey, the Natu- Natu- I, 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 I'd have to go and check, but I think like the Natufians are like by by the Bronze Age, they're like half the ancestry or less, like around. You see, the, okay, did y'all hear what he just said? He said yes, if. You know, if the Israelites were, they've been more like of the Bronze Age or Neolithic, like the Natufians. Some people like to equate the, oh yes, people, and they're not so we know as Yehuda Jews are a middle uh, are a Bronze Age people, and they're not solely Natufians. Because some people like to equate the, oh yes, you're exactly correct. The Natufians, I like, I'd have to go and check, but I think like the Natufians are like. By by the Bronze Age, they're like half the ancestry or less. Like See, okay. half of the ancestry. And we he ain't talking about Y chromosomes. He's just talking about autosomy. So if the, they're women, so if these so called Semites, these Hobble Group J one page fifty eight, if they would have came from Iraq or Iran or wherever they came from, um, we know that Abraham came from Ur of the Chaldees. So if he came from Ur of the Chaldees. 
and he carried Hollywood Group J1, page 58, and he came to the Levant or to is to the Palestine during those times or whatever they were calling it, and he would have intermingled with a woman that was already there, she would have possibly had Natufian DNA. So Abraham from the, that point on would have been producing children with Natufian DNA. So it doesn't it's only it's not limited to um hollow groups. People think, oh, it's just limited to hollow groups. No. Obviously, uh, that's where autosomal comes into play. My me myself, I have Natufian DNA, autosomal DNA. So, and you can find that on GenMatch. GenMatch shows you how much percentage of Natufian DNA you have. Around that, you know, around half. Right. Um, so they, so um, I was going to ask, so the Natufians are there thousands, tens of thousands of years ago, and then the other lineages that come into the Middle East, they come in the middle with the Bronze Age? Is it, is it a, earlier? Earlier than the Bronze oh, Age. Oh, earlier. Yeah, let's say like a... It's not even Copper Age, but like Copper Age. And, and he's talking about like the late Calcolithic Age. And so, but he's talking about around this time. And this is intermediate bronze. And so, let me see if we got one in here, down here. I don't think so. But. Yeah, we don't got none. We got the T's, and these T's have nothing to do with the late bronze. They're not Israelites. These are your Israelites right here. Um, yeah, these are your Israelites right here. So, especially this one, late Iron Age, I'll do J1. And you can go the same way. You can go to Jordan. You can see that those Moabites, the same time the Moabites was in Jordan, they were carrying Hobble Group J1. <clears throat> Yep. All right. Earlier, like late Neolithic and Copper Age. So let's say like between six thousand and three thousand BC. I'll give you that time period. So, so the Natufians, so the Natufians, the Natufians would be a good example to use to determine that these are Israelites or Jews, correct? Doc? Yeah. No, because those those groups those groups came together later. So what are they made from? Uh, that eighty percent that I'm talking about is Natufian, Anatolian farmer, and Zagros farmer. Mm hmm. Yep. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you heard what he said. Well, Caucasus Brother Garfield snuck in there. Right. Caucasus Mountain. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So like it's, the it's, the Caucasus Mountain. Right. Caucasus Mountain. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like it's they're like a melting pot of those two groups. Uh huh. Yep. And I hundred percent agree with this. You know why? Because if you read the book of um, Genesis, chapter 8, verse 4, it says the ark landed in the mountains of Ararat, and that area is in the Lesser Caucasus. So if you're telling me these people came down from the mountains of Ararat, which would have been located in Armenia originally, but now is in present-day Turkey, and these people would have started migrating down by the Euphrates and the Tigris River, because if you actually look at a, at a map, you will see that the Euphrates and the Tigris rivers run down from Armenia down to Mesopotamia to the Persian Gulf. So, and that's important because um, the Mesopotamia is, is a fertile land. It's called the Fertile Crescent. It's like the perfect farming land. You know, people like who look like me didn't exist 6,000 years ago. So you can't say that ancient groups are Indian. Like Indians are probably Indian, right? right? Uh, right, so, right, right. Oh. 50,000 years ago, people that looked like you didn't exist either. So, you know, you can say the same thing about the Israelites. Like, there's a certain period where their genetic components did not coexist together, and so you can't ask that question. I think maybe by 5,000 5, years ago, you can start asking the question. That's about when. Right. So, and what would you say as far as haplogroups or genetics, which would, I don't know if you answered before, like the founding haplogroups, would it be with... Would it be closer to a J or an E one B one B lineage for Jews in the Levant? Because you know they come, you know they say Abraham might be placed yeah. in the Bronze Age and oh, so whatever. What would be like the Cohens are I think a J one P fifty three. That is absolutely correct. Um, but I think that the Afro Asiatic languages are more with E. So I and you see what I'm saying? He said Afro Asiatic languages. And if you watch my video, if you haven't, um, just Go watch it after this video. But 
I did a video on Afroasiatic languages and the whole concept of the people that came up with Afroasiatic languages. And they clearly um, told individuals, like, not to use, like, you're not supposed to be using um, DNA like that. Like, you're not supposed to be using, like, ancestry, like, your ethnicity based off of a language. It was Joseph Greenberg. He's a so-called Jew, and he said that. He said you shouldn't be using to determine um, ethnicity. You shouldn't be using a language to determine ethnicity, a race. It did not reflect race. So that's that's a problem. When I hear these so-called geneticists, if um, Razib Khan considers himself a geneticist, you're not supposed to be doing that because you, you got Arabic all throughout North Africa, and those people aren't Arabs. They are not Semitic people. You do have J1 page 58 in North Africa, 100%. I agree with that. But you also have the indigenous E. Dash M81, which are the original people that were in that land, which are called Berbers or Amaziah. Amaziah. So in this Afro-Asiatic language um, concept is, is down to these languages. Berber, Chadic, Cushetic, um, Amotic, and Semitic. So majority of these um, hobbl groups or majority of the hobbl groups that are commonly um, referenced to these so-called languages are E1B1B. Um, E1B1A was excluded, excluded from the Hemetic languages. They weren't part of the Hemetic language. They weren't part of the Semitic languages either because that's the hobbl group J1 page 58. Um, now the concept is that, oh, E1B1B originated Afro-Asiatic languages. This is, in, that's, that's not, that makes no sense because it was white people that came up with these language classifications. There was no such thing as Afro-Asiatic. It was them that created it. And like I said, you're going to, after this video, jump to my Afro-Asiatic um, video and you're going to fall in love with that video because you're going to be like, wow. You, so you're right. You're not supposed to be using a language classification to determine somebody's ethnicity or race. You're not supposed to do that. And in, and the whole concept, what that represented, it represented the Caucasian race, which E1B1B is considered a Mediterranean race. Um, the so-called West Asians is considered a Caucasian race. The Asiatic Caucasian race, they're considered Asiatic Caucasians. Or um, another one they call them is Afro-Asians. Or oh, you're Afro-Asians or something like that. That's what they call these Hobble Group J1 page 58s or these Hobble Group Js. And this Wikipedia page, it, it pretty much cites everything, everything about the whole classification of the Afro-Asiatic language. So it's a great, um, a great tool to use. Well, I think um, the Coens... Uh, you know, people with the last name Cohen, that paternal lineage. I think that's intrusive to the Afro Asiatic peoples. I think they came probably from Western Iran. Um, I hate I hate to tell you this, but um, if they would have came down from the mountains of Ararat, Razib Khan, guess where they would have probably migrated through? Iran. Iran. Iran is right next to Iraq. So of course they would have freaking went through Iran if they would have um came down from Armenia, Turkey. And we know that's where um Abraham was said to go through Ur in Iraq. Where was Cush? Was Cush in East Africa? No. Cush was in Iraq. Babylon, Babel, Nimrud. Nimrud was all located in Iraq. So that's where Cush. That's that's where um the four the the gardens of um the Garden of Eden the four rivers of the Garden of Eden is located in Iraq. Maybe northern Mesopotamia. That's my opinion. I'm not one hundred percent sure about that. But oh, okay, cool. But you yeah, want to apple groups? Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. I asked. I was done. All right. Um, the question on the we're going to respond about the, the Sumerian deal. Yeah. Um. So we don't have that because of political troubles in Iraq. Uh, I would anticipate that the Sumerian DNA is going to be enriched for... Uh, <clears throat> so if the people in the Levant are skewed to the Tufians, the Sumerian DNA is going to be skewed to the Zagros farmers, but they're going to be the same mix. 
I'm probably less Anatolian farmer because the Anatolian farmers. So, and like, basically, the Hollywood group he's talking about is J One. If anybody's not really familiar with what he's talking about, he's talking about J One because um, the Marsh Arabs are an isolated people who have been isolated for the past four thousand years, and um, they belong to um, Hollywood group J One, um, page zero eight. And or another way you can say that is J1E, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I've covered this in my previous videos also. Um, all you have to look up um, or just go to Google and type in Marsh Arabs Genetics. And you're going to see that document. Or you can just um, find one of my previous videos and I show that document. Moved along the Mediterranean coast. Um, I don't think they went as much. It's not far south. But the Sumerians, like Mesopotamia, I think we're going to have the same. Because you see in Western Iran, you see in Western Iran, like Natufian type ancestry showing up. So they're obviously washing from uh, the West to the East. They're going to go through Sumeria. So I think we will see. I'm not 100%. And sure. another thing, what he's talking about. So the people that were originally in Levant, um, they, they spread their pre pottery culture or whatever. They started spreading to um, Iran in those areas. So they would have been dealing with them. Um, they would have been possibly intermingling the, with the women and whatnot, um, taking each other's women. Um, just like how you have here in America, you know, we mix in with different women. You know what I'm saying? We don't even ask, you know, what's your hobble group? What's your autosomal DNA? You know what I'm saying? We don't do that. Like, people just fall in love. They fall in love. They get married. They have children. You know what I'm saying? They have their children. They don't sit there and like, oh, what's your hobble group? What's your DNA? What, what, what you belong to? They don't do stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So, it's the same concept during those times. You know what I'm saying? They would would have saw saw their clothing, their clothing, like their culture would have given them away based off the like maybe what clothes they were wearing. You know how they wore their ha hairstyle. You know something like that. Like what were they practicing? The uh, culture they they were practicing. They weren't really basing like oh what was your ethnicity. It was more like culture. What do you follow? Go ahead and skip this video to. Forty, thirty, forty thousand years. So I, 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 I'm a, I'm a, I'm a believer in the. I might be wrong. I'm very unconfident, but I'm a believer in the old expansion of Eve and sub Africa. Not, okay. not, not recent, right? Okay. So what do we, what do, what did the re, what would the recent say? What have they said? The research? It's just not clear. It's not clear. We don't, we don't have enough ancient DNA. And if you don't have ancient DNA, it's very unclear. So what I find so funny is we don't have enough ancient DNA, but we got 12,007-year-old Natufian DNA that it's, that's not ancient, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, and I'm not blaming putting this on him or anything like that, you know what I'm saying? It's just, but I just find it very ironic how we don't have ancient DNA, but we got 12,000-year-old Natufian remains in Israel. Like, are you, so are you, what I think what he was trying to say is, if the people weren't smart enough to like, um, you know, to put their um, their dead in like caves or preserve them like the, the Egyptians, that we're not going to have their DNA. Because once again, if they don't have collagen um, in the bone, they can't get the genome. And without the genome, you can't find out which hobble groups and, you know, who, which, which what was their autosomia, which um, groups they consisted of. So that's that's the that's the, the actual problem. Okay. I, I think um, I think Dr. Ken is being very careful, which which a scholar should be, because you don't want to speak in absolutes. And I hope people understand that when we when people argue on YouTube, we can make all the absolute claims you want, but I guarantee you don't have PhD or doctor behind your name. Um, let me see if there's any more questions. For and Dr. my thing is, you really don't have to have a, a PH, a, a master's or a doctorate. The, what you need to have is you need to have the the academic research, um, the so, you know the sources that proves their research and proves on um, the point that you're trying to make. You know what I'm saying? I don't think this individual from um, from this comment, the Yokobi Oded, I don't I don't know if he has a PhD or not. He might not have a PhD. But that doesn't stop him from being able to educate a, a person that actually does have a PhD and is a, prof a professor. So, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, to me, 
you can have a PhD all day, but you could also be um you could also be teaching pers- um persuado science, which that's the case with this Iran uh, um Iran um Iran El Hayat. He's teaching persuado science. Dr. Khan, um, let me see. All right. So for now, what about what role would you say like a, a sickle cell would play? Because I was reading the research about a sickle cell, particular sickle cell that we have in the in, um, African American. All right. So I think that's that's it with this video. Um, I brought up this line farm because this guy, he's one of those Black Hebrew Israelites, saying that you know E one B one B is Arabs, and I don't know where they come up with this foolishness, like. And we already know that E1B1A was already a thing in um, Africa when the Nutufians, the E1B1Bs, were in um, the Levant 12,000 years ago. So we already have E1B1A in Africa already. So I don't know where where they get this foolishness that somehow they um, they was Israelites. But as you can tell, this individual is using this um, this Dr. Iran El Hayek's work. Um, he also uses Brother Garfield's video right here. He uses Brother Garfield's video to prove what he's what he's trying to say is, oh, they're Hobble Group E's, um, they're E one B ones, and th- of course this one he's gonna say, oh, I'm the chosen people. I'm E one B one A. I'm Jacob. I'm chosen, and it's it's just really funny. It's it's really funny, and that's that's the whole point of this video is just these people need to be um. They need to be um, taken out. Like this whole concept, they need to be, you know, taken out of uh, out of um, YouTube, out of like making videos because they can making this persuado science, this, this all these theories, and you can see it right here that they're claiming Isaac belonged to E one B one A and E one B one B belonged to Ishmael, and it's just complete nonsense. Complete nonsense. This black Hebrew twister lights try to come up with all these weird. Um, these weird um little fantasies of connecting um Hubbard groups and saying, oh well, this how these people belong to uh, these people. Like, no, they don't. And if you don't have the proof, um, with the skeletons, like with the archaeologists have found remains and actually connected um to people, you can't be sit there and making these random um claims. You just can't. But that's what these that's what these people do though. I actually saw him with the video of um Puff Daddy of Sean of Sean Combs saying Arabs is E one B one B. Like, bro, what? So like you're saying that Sean P Diddy Combs is E one B one B? Like, what are you talking about, man? Anyway, anyways, this individual blocked me on on YouTube because I, I challenged them to a live debate. You know what I'm saying, but obviously he declined. He, he de- declined. He called me a racist. Let me go ahead and push this up. He said that's racist. That's racist to say something like that. And that's what he told me. He said I was racist because I said that he doesn't belong to any of that, um, any of that Caucasian, um, you know, stories of coming down from the mountains of Ararat and coming down to Iraq and. And going over to the Levant and none of that stuff, he called me racist. So, exactly what he told me. That's what every time I deal with, that's that's what they tell me, that I'm racist. That's racist. Exactly what I get deal with every time. When I tell them the truth. Because what people don't realize is the Bible is not that old. Like, the whole concept of, of the biblical Adam isn't that old. It's, it's not. I'm saying, like, what's today's Hebrew calendar today? Like just go off of that. Today is the twenty seventh of Adar, five thousand seven hundred eighty two. That's the year. All right. So I brought up brought up this doctor on Yeshua Ben Ephraim. He's the original Black Hebrew Israelite that started all this foolishness with the E one B one A being real Israel. Um, you know, they're the real Hebrew Israelites and whatnot. It was him. It was all started from him by him. And he's created these weird little, um, these weird little fringe groups, just like black Hebrew Israelites, just like the, um, the, the West, the one West camp organizations of black Hebrew Israelites. 
Um, he's the same concept. He's the same creator. So he's the 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 DNA side of the Black Hebrew Israelites. This is your 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 founder, the leader and founder. He told you right there in his um his wallpaper, leader and founder of E one B one A DNA teaching. He was the first individual. So all these little fringe groups that's going off of his doctrine, that's where they got it from. They got it from this individual. So um, I think that's, let me see if I got any comments, because I've been trying to stay with the comments, but I was checking. Let's see. Anybody got any comments? And if you're not, just please like, share, and subscribe if you like this content that I'm making. Um, yeah, if you hit that bell also, if, if you want to catch my live, I'm trying to figure out like how to get it where I can stream properly. Cause I'm using this OBS and it's not all that great. So if you got some, um, advice, please share. I looked at that club. What is it called? Um, the clubhouse or something like that. I think that's what I used before, but I'm not too, too big of a fan of that. Um, the chick that's on there, she got a C on her eye, like doing the all all seeing eye symbol. So I'm not sure um, about using that app. I don't know. I mean, it's no big deal, but why is she doing that with her eye? Why can't she just throw up a C, like and just like put it up like below her chin or something like that? I don't know. Just that over that one eye, and that's her right eye. She's doing like the eye of horse and stuff like that, and I I just don't follow people doing stuff like that. So. But if you got any advice, just please let me know. Um, I would definitely love to be able to do live streaming. People call in and ask me questions and whatnot. And we basically will we'll go from there. So my, to me, that will be, um, you know, more interesting um, than what I can do right now on this OBS. Because I feel limited on this. You know what I'm saying? So just hit me up. And I can't stress this enough. If you don't have a Bible, uh, Bible timeline, you need to have a Bible timeline. You can't, can't sit here and deal with the Bible and DNA and whatnot without a biblical timeline. You need a biblical timeline. Um, I made a video about this too. So if you, if you don't got one, find one. I got multiple biblical timelines. And no, they're not all going to be the same. You have different biblical timelines. You have the Hebrew one. You have a Syrian one, you have the Christian one, you have different ones. But what you're going to get is a rough estimate. And that's the most important thing, is the rough estimate. And we know not all cultures believe that this the earth is um, as old as what the Bible says it is. You know what I'm saying? That's from one, one side of the perspective. By, by Bible side, the people who wrote the Bible, that's their perspective how old the earth is. I'm saying other cultures, such as Syrians, they have their own beliefs of how old the how old the Earth is. I'm saying the Mayans in Mexico, they probably had a um understanding of how old the Earth is. The Sumerians in Mesopotamia, they have a probably a, um an understanding of how old the Earth is. So, but anyways, since I ain't got no comments, um, I'm probably in this video. All right. Thanks for watching.